Hey, Spookaroos. It's your host, Eric D., and this is a remix episode, but it's very unusual tonight because I actually have a guest who I just happen to be recording a different episode with, but I figured since she's here, she might as well help me introduce this remix episode. So please welcome back to the show, longtime Spookaroo, Susan Barrett. Hi, everybody. Thank you for having me, Eric. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, now, Susan, we are introducing this remix episode, which are the episodes. It's an old episode um, from the podcast formerly known as Spooky Ass Shit or Spooky Mm -hmm. AS. Uh, And uh, this one is the episode that I did about my trip to the Cryptozoology Museum up in Maine. Oh, the Cryptozoology Museum. I love this one. Yeah, it's a good episode. But um, you know who didn't necessarily love it? Who's that? The guy who owns the Cryptozoology <gasps> Museum. Oh, <laughs> what yeah. happened? Did he must hear? have. He wasn't. He, to be fair, he. It's not like he wrote me a nasty email or anything, but um, he did respond to the episode like within a day or two of it having come out. I feel like I could be exaggerating, but I feel like it was pretty darn quick. No, I mean obviously um, it was in the zeitgeist. He responded. Yeah, he must have been, you know, googling himself or whatever, or the museum. Or it's uh, Lauren Coleman. Uh, he's a noted cryptozoologist, for what that's worth, and uh, he pops up on like, so, like pretty much anything you see about cryptozoology. They'll either interview him or at least reference one of his books or something like that, because he's he's he pops up everywhere that there's like some kind of sighting of something. He's got to like put his two cents in about it. Fantastic. So, so, so what did he have to say? Uh, I should have pulled up the email, but uh, I didn't. Um, but basically it was just like, you know, I think you made some valid points, but you didn't really talk about how we're cheaper than the, the uh, Victorian house that you went to. And, whoa, you know, whoa, blah, blah, blah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Because the main point of my thing was that uh if i'm if i remember this episode correctly i haven't listened to the whole thing recently but if i remember this episode correctly my whole thing was that um well first of all a little little information here this was like fatima's my co-host on this episode and this was like one of the first road trips that we ever did together and i was like man this is kind of dicey because uh, you know, who knows how this road trip's going to go. And, um, she was not someone before we started hanging out. She wasn't someone who was like interested in this kind of stuff. Yeah. You know? So I was like, oh man, like it, I remember it took a long time. I think we got stuck in traffic. It's really not a terrible drive. Generally. It's only like maybe, maybe under three hours, I think. Yeah. Um, but it just felt really long. Now we've done plenty of road trips. Yeah, now we've done plenty of road trips. And to us, like, three hours would be almost nothing, you know. But um, at the time, I was just like, I don't know about this. And then we got there. And the museum is cool if you're into that kind of thing and if you're into that vibe of, like, a museum that's, like, not a museum. Right. You know? Right. If you're into, like, kind of, like, a kitschy kind of thing. Uh, And I know that Mr. Coleman will probably uh, take issue with my calling his museum kitschy, but uh, it is what it is. I mean, you walk in and, well, first of all, I should say also, I enjoyed the museum. And I think I say that on the episode, too. Like, I enjoyed it. And actually, Fatima even enjoyed it. Well, that's the thing. I mean, kitschy isn't necessarily bad. No. And there were some legit interesting things there as well. But most of it was a little kitschy. But again, you're talking to a Salem guy here. So I understand the, you know, the kitsch factor and how that can be a good thing and how it can drive tourism and how it's fun to, especially when you're talking about something that's maybe, you know, in our opinions, most of us spookaroos, uh, not necessarily like a serious subject, you know, Uh, right. Bigfoot and the Jersey devil and the Dover demon and all that kind of stuff and the Loch Ness monster we like to have a little fun with it. So that's okay. You know, no big deal. Exactly right. But I will say, uh, you know, I have two nieces that have birthdays in the early fall. I gave them some options. And last year, they chose to go to the Cryptozoology Museum. So it was actually me, two of my nieces, and one of my nephews. 
uh, and my sister. And uh, I did ask Fatima if she wanted to go again. She was not interested in returning oh. to the Cryptozoology Museum. Well, even though you know. she was like, you know, it was fun, but not that fun. <laughs> so I mean, three hours is still a drive. I can understand. Yeah. But tell so, me the nieces and nev- nephews loved it. Oh, they. I Well, one of my nieces, I think she does these kind of trips um, because she wants to spend time with me and she knows that I like those kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So like, it's not necessarily like her thing and she'll have a good time cause she's with her uncle and she's with her cousin and you know, like whatever. But uh, it's not like she's like, Oh, I really want to learn about Bigfoot. Um, right. But I have another niece who is all about that kind of stuff. So she liked it. She bought a bunch of books and then my nephew is a lot my nephew Tyler who's been on the show he's a lot like me um and we get along really well because like he's like me you know right so many years ago right. and he was like he was like oh this place is like batshit insane and it's awesome mm-hmm. so we had a good time with that but uh it was funny because we walked in and the guy at the counter was like how oh, have you folks been here before and now this was still during the pandemic right so we were all wearing masks and everything but uh-huh things had eased up a little bit it was in that sweet spot last at the end of last summer where it looked like all the numbers are going down especially here on the east coast all the numbers are going in the right direction uh massachusetts was really low and maine was even lower i think so uh they still wanted you to wear masks and social distance but you could go to things things were open um and then like a couple months later everything went to hell but we never had had that we were but anyway we had a little we had a little sweet spot for a moment And uh, so we walked in and he was like, oh, yeah, you know, have you been here before? And I said, yeah, I have. Uh, And he's like, oh, when did you come? And I said, right when you first relocated, I guess you were still like building this place. And he's like, oh, oh, you're going to love it then because it's very different now. It's it's like a whole new place. And really. All that I could see had changed was that the hallway was like on the other side. Oh, no. (laughs) But everything. Like pretty much the same. The museum is still mostly. The museum is still mostly like, it looks like somebody's yard sale. Oh. You know, there's like there was like a rubber shark, in a display case, like not like a fancy rubber shark, like a toy shark you would get, at Walmart or something. Oh and my god. It had a little label underneath that said Megalodon. Like how could? <laughs> I mean, there were, there were several. How can he disagree with the use of the word kitsch in this situation? There were several uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle figures on display. Oh, my like God. Like the original ones, but then also like those three foot ones you used to be able to get like Toys R Us and stuff. Incredible. Um, because those are based on uh, Kappas or I forget exactly what they're called, but some creature in Japanese mythology. And like, but that's just an example. Like, there's just a lot of toys. There's a whole display of like Bigfoot toys. And then oh every God. once in a while, you'll get like, these are relics from a real Bigfoot attack. Like, these are the, the uh, this isn't exactly what you'll see. I'm just making something up, but it's the kind of thing you would see. Like, these are the, uh, the shingles from the house that Bigfoot attacked in, you know, whatever year and whatever place. And, and here's some, some hair clippings that we think might have come from this. And here's a rock from where oh the Dover God. came in like leaned on and uh so you know there's some some legitimately interesting if not necessarily like scientifically proven things in this uh museum and i use quotations on on that for sure but to me that's still a good time i left happy i bought a bigfoot um casting which i posted on instagram i'll repost it to go along with this episode but like a casting of the you know Bigfoot footprint from Bluff Creek, which is the Patterson footage, the famous footage. My niece, like I said, got a bunch of books. She's going to come on and do a book report sometime. I got to talk to her and see uh, where she's at with those. Um, And Tyler, Tyler loved it, you know, kind of ironically, I think, but in a a good spirit. So I think, you know, we'll probably even go back in a few years or something. Who knows? But uh, because maybe the hallway will be back on the other, other side. Yeah, who knows? (laughs) Yeah, it was so. It was just so funny though. The guy was like, "Oh, it's totally different, totally different." And then we walked in, and I was like, "No, it's still like one hallway downstairs, one hallway upstairs," and you walk oh. back and forth, and you like look at the little tchotchkes they have, you know. Um, oh. I will say the drive didn't seem as bad this time. Maybe it's because I wasn't like as nervous because I was like with my family, and it like doesn't matter, you know, like whatever. Right. Um, 
but uh, I will say the drive seemed much quicker. So I enjoy the Cryptozoology Museum, even though, you know, I rank on it a little bit in the episode and I did just now. But the truth is, I do enjoy it. If you don't live too far from it, it's worth visiting. If you happen to be in Portland, Maine, for some reason, um, then I would definitely recommend checking out. And it is still a good value. I forget how much tickets were, but they were not expensive. I think they were either $10 or probably less, maybe less than that per person. So uh, so well, check it out. Specifically less than whatever he wanted to call your attention to the fact that it was cheaper than. Yeah, because we had gone to the museum and then we went to a, a mansion, like an old mansion. Um, so... And the old mansion, I forget, I think it's called the Victoria Mansion. Uh, hmm. I could be remembering wrong, but you'll hear it in this episode. So I recommend that place, too. That was fun. But uh, if you're into monsters and stuff, then Cryptozoology Museum. International, sorry. International oh. Cryptozoology oh, Museum is the place for you. Fantastic. So listen to this episode. to spooky ass shit i am your host eric dwinnells and tonight my special guest making her debut on spooky ass shit is it just spooky ass shit or is this your official podcast debut yeah uh, podcast debut there you go mm -hmm. fatima elmi hello welcome fatima oh thanks hey yeah uh there's a reason that fatima is here specifically for this episode which is going to be about cryptozoology Specifically, the International Cryptozoology Museum mm -hmm. in Portland, Maine. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Don't forget to check out the show's webpage, SpookyAssShit.com. There you can see pictures from this episode and every other episode. Now today, again, in general, briefly, we're going to discuss cryptozoology. But specifically, we're going to discuss the International Cryptozoology Museum right. of Portland, Maine. And the reason that Fatima is here to discuss it with me is because she's the one who accompanied me on my trip mm -hmm. earlier today up to Maine, which, even though I've lived very close to it all my life, I've never been to. Mm-hmm. For any reason, I've never been to the state of Maine, and everyone tells me how great it is, how beautiful it is, but I've never made it up there until today. And it was a beautiful day. It was. Mm. Now, cryptozoology is the study of creatures whose existence has not been validated or accepted by scientific consensus. It includes animals who are otherwise considered extinct, known only in folklore but with no supporting physical evidence, or known animals existing outside of their normal geographic range. So, for example, a cheetah in Wyoming, or something like that. Right. Now, cryptozoology is not recognized as a legitimate branch of zoology. It is considered a pseudoscience, because it presents its evidence as scientific, but the evidence used to support the existence of these animals does not follow the scientific method, and it tends to fail to hold up to scientific scrutiny. All right. However, believers in, crypto, in cryptids and cryptozoologists um, would tell you that, although they may not be recognized as actual zoologists, uh, animals that previously would have fallen under the category of cryptozoology would include pandas, mountain gorillas, and all sorts of other animals that were only discovered relatively recently, oh. even though they've lived for, you know, however many hundreds of thousands or millions of years. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. hmm. So before we get to talking about the museum... Have you ever had any encounters with any kind of cryptid or a Bigfoot? Do you have like any or like any childhood stories about being afraid of them or anything like that? Nope. All right. <laughs> I do not. 
I just remember um, Harry and the Hendersons. Yeah. Was was that a Bigfoot? That was a Bigfoot. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. He had a movie and a TV show. Oh, there was a TV show. That's right. A live action show. Right. Yes. Yeah. Well, when I was a little kid, we won't go too much into any one cryptid because we can do a whole other episode on Bigfoot and, you know, on whatever else. Mm -hmm. But when I was a little kid, I grew up in a fairly wooded area. Right. And sometimes you would, you know, mom would be driving home and I'd be in the car looking out the window. And I, I was a very nervous kid anyway, as I've talked about many times on this podcast um, for many reasons. But when we would drive through like some of these backwoods roads, the trees kind of grow over mm. the woods. And it's very, very creepy looking under just the headlights, you know, because there's no street lights and you're just it's just trees. Right. Um, and I would call those roads Bigfoot roads. Okay. Because I was always paranoid that I was going to see a Bigfoot crossing the street. Yeah. That and it would, would freak, freak me, me out. out. Yeah. Yeah. Never happened, by the way. Well, yeah. But still. I was afraid of um, Bigfoot. And I was also, this isn't a cryptid, but I was also afraid we might see like a murderer in the shrubs. Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Like just hanging out by the side of the road. <laughs> and not that he was going to come get us or anything, but just that, we, just that I might see someone like a Charles <laughs> Manson looking guy. With a knife, like by the side of the road. Yeah, that's scary. Which I also never saw. Mm-hmm. But these were things that I was afraid of. Right. When I was little. Yeah. It and I still happen. think about them mm-hmm. when I go down those roads today. I'm not afraid so much, but I still think of like, oh, this is a Bigfoot road. <laughs> that's your memory. Yeah. Um. Another, this is, a, now I mentioned that the Dover Demon is sort of my like hometown cryptid, which I guess is the closest thing because I don't remember Ashland, Massachusetts specifically having its own cryptid, except in my household. Because uh, I'm not sure this 100% counts as a cryptid. It's definitely not a true story anyway, so it's not a true cryptid. But my brother um, did do a very good job of convincing me <laughs> that there was some form of beast that lived in the woods behind my house. Most likely, he said, a werewolf. Oh. Um, and there was like a little shack in those woods. So I was really afraid that that's where this he beast lived. man lived. And then my my neighbor, who was my brother's age, also got in into the act. Oh, no. And started telling me, oh, yeah, I was up late one night and I heard like this heavy breathing by my window and like cursing. And it sa- sounded like a really like, you know, uh, 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 shit. Yeah. he's like so i just got up and like closed the wood you know i just closed my turn i i just turned my lights off and went under the covers right away and stuff but the next day i found hair on the windowsill oh no and you know all this stuff so that's just mean it was mean but you believed it i believed it so much that i told my mom about it and was like freaking out about it and she made my brother come and tell me that it wasn't real and like he had to apologize <laughs> Which was very rare because he was definitely the favorite child. <laughs> so like if he tortured me and made me believe in like the devil in my closet or a werewolf outside my window, my mom, like a more typical reaction would be like, Eric, that's your fault for believing. Oh, no, that's so <laughs> my mom wasn't mean by any means. Right. But she just had a favorite clearly. <laughs> and it was like Dan. he could do no wrong. No. Right. So if Dan did something wrong, it must have been something that we did. <laughs> like he was, oh, Dan was just trying to entertain you with a story and you took it the wrong way. <laughs> it would be that kind of thing. Oh, man. That's not good. Now, Fatima, a while ago I had mentioned that I wanted to check out this museum. And then, what was it, last week or earlier this week, you said, hey, why don't we take a day trip up to Maine and check out that museum you wanted to go to? Right. And I was kind of surprised because this isn't really your thing. It's definitely my no. thing, but it's not really yours. Right. Well, I actually really had no idea what it was until yeah. you sent me the link to the <laughs> museum the other day. So, yeah, I had no idea. And, yeah, you're right. It's not my thing, but it was pretty interesting. Yeah, well, we, we'll get into actually talking about the museum in a second. But, mm-hmm. like, what did you what did you think it was going to be like before... We went there. Did you have any like thoughts in your heads? Um, What you might crypto sounded like death. 
<laughs> <laughs> like scary museum of yeah. death, maybe. All right. Well, it wasn't that, right? No. So you must have been pleasantly surprised. Right. Yeah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So when you get to the museum, the first thing you notice, I think, well, you, I was a little taken aback by how small it seemed. Yes, it was very small. And I read the um, sign, and all I noticed was no restrooms. Yeah, we had taken a two and a half hour. <laughs> it was actually longer than that. It was supposed to be two and a half hours, but with yeah. traffic. I don't know how long it took, but we were in traffic for a while. We were. It was at least three hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, we definitely could have used restrooms. <laughs> but there, it's it's under construction right now. Right. They did mention that they're going to have a grand reopening um, on Halloween, they said. Halloween, October 31st. Yeah, yeah so you can sure. check them out then when you, if you want to see like what it looks like when it's really finished. And I guess they're going to have a cafe in there. Right, yeah. Which they're, would be nice. They're going to spruce it up. Yeah. It's definitely, you can definitely tell it's under construction. Yes. You could hear the crew working. <laughs> oh, there was crew working, yeah. Yeah. It was loud. It was very loud at points. It was, you could see the whole, like every all the uh, visitors to the museum kind of jump. When like it's really quiet and then all of a sudden a really loud saw or drill comes shrieking in. Right. And of course everyone's thinking, what the hell was that? Mm-hmm. In the cryptozoology museum. <laughs> yeah. So I was surprised by how small it was, um, but I, but then I noticed it was two floors. So I said, okay, maybe it's just that the downstairs is really small because it's basically a hallway. Yeah, a narrow hallway. Yeah. Loaded with stuff. Right. There are a lot of things to look at in that hallway. Mm-hmm. There's like cabinets full of stuff. There's going to be pictures, by the way, on com. Don't forget about the two-minute video we had to watch before oh, yeah. we purchased our tickets. So before you even buy tickets, that's true, yeah. You have to watch a video, which is um, an introduction to the museum by its founder, a guy named Lauren Coleman, who, as much as this is a museum to cryptozoology... It's also a museum to Lauren Coleman. He's mm. all over the place with it. Now, it is his collection, it is. so it's yeah. understandable. It's his thing. But um, definitely <laughs> mentions a lot about him <laughs> Yes. in the museum, I noticed. <laughs> yes. But hey, if I had a museum and I had the opportunity to put myself in it all the time, I might do the same thing. Absolutely. I know you would. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this place is kind of like a museum. Yeah. Oh, your your place? Yeah. Yes. There's lots. I just haven't... It, there's lots to see. <laughs> yeah. I, ha- I don't put little tags out explaining what everything is. You just got to figure it out. Mm-hmm. But that's part of the mystery. That's right. And I don't have to pay $10 to get in. You're, you didn't? You're supposed to. <laughs> supposed to leave it downstairs in the bin. Okay. Good to know. Yeah. You just pay on your way out. Got it. All right. So... You walk in. The people that worked there were very nice. Yes, I would say so. Uh, and in our case, we entered through the gift shop, which I don't know if that's always going to be the case or if that's just the way it was for today because of all the construction. We had to go in a different entrance than I guess they would normally use because we had a, there was a they have their main sign, but then it said please use the other side of the building to enter. So we had to walk all the way around the building. Right. Which, by the way, we passed by this place called Circus Main, which was closed. But looked amazing. You could see in the windows that they had like, you know, um, trapeze and um, juggling stuff. And like, I was like, ah, mm-hmm. yep. I want this to be open now. That would have been fun. So I'm not 100% sure what it is. I didn't look it up when I got home. But as a fire eater and someone who uh, has known to dabble in clowning, I was interested. Oh, well, maybe some other time. So anyway, we walked around the building. Went into the back entrance. I think it's all going to look nice. Like, I don't think it's really fair to review it in that sense right now because they are under construction. Right. No, I think it's going to be a really nice space. It's a nice, you know, area that it's in. So yeah. I think it's going to be really nice. Yeah. It's just very small right now. Right. Um, and I don't know if the actual displays are going to get any bigger, but it seems like it might open up at least a bit because the cafe area hopefully will be a little bit larger. Right. Um, so... Because it literally is a hallway. Uh, and then 
you go upstairs and it looks like it's going to open to a big empty room, not empty room, but a, you know, a big sized room that you can kind of walk through and really see mm-hmm. everything. But actually it's like, uh, uh, what are the, what are they called? Like a gallery. Yeah. So it's basically like another small hallway that overlooks the small hallway you were just in. <laughs> yeah. That's what it was. Just full of more cabinets that you can look at. Right. So uh, I did take some pictures and um, some of the things I want to talk about. Uh, well, first of all, it begins, the first hallway downstairs begins with some sketches of different cryptids. And of course, I'm always on the lookout for the closest thing I have to a hometown cryptid, which is the Dover Demon. There is a sketch of the Dover Demon right in the beginning, uh, even though the Dover Demon is not like one of the more popular cryptids because he was only seen, depending on which accounts you believe, by two to four people over the course of one to three days. Okay. Um, and I did. we already did an episode I about know, it. I know, I was going to say, back and listen to I it. probably have to go back and listen to it. Yeah, there's an episode about uh, American Cryptids, Volume 1, I believe. Okay. So it's about the uh, mostly about the Jersey Devil. Yes. But a little bit in there about the Dover Demon as well towards the end. Okay. Uh, I recently found the website of the man, one of the men who allegedly saw the Dover Demon. Really? So I'm really hopeful that I can get an interview with him. Well, that'll be nice. He honestly doesn't seem too keen to talk about it. So I'm not sure how it will go, but... I have seen that he's done some press interview, like some um, like newspaper interviews and stuff. So, how long ago did he see? Did he say that he saw the Dover? It was like forty years ago. Oh, okay. He was a teenager. Oh, yeah. Okay. And he, I think he's just kind of done with it now. I see. He's a fine artist, and he does he does uh, really cool paintings. Actually, Hmm. if you go to his website, I'll look it up. Cool. Later on, put a link on the website. Nice. As a show of good faith to him, too. Yeah. So if he ever hears it, I'll be like, hey, I linked to your site. Uh, yeah, shout out. If you go to a site, just <laughs> leave a comment that said, the site is awesome. Your artwork is awesome. Spooky AS sent me here. <laughs> and then when I shoot him an email and say, hey, because he still lives like in the area. Really? Yeah. I don't see why he wouldn't want to talk to you. Yeah. Well, because I'm a stranger, and why does he want to talk about something that happened to him 40 years ago that he's trying to put behind him? But we'll try. Okay. Uh, another interesting thing that you see right away is the very first piece that was acquired for the museum, it said on the little plaque next to it, is the uh, 1960 World Book Expedition flag from the Himalayas. This okay. was when they were searching for... Specifically, the Yeti. Huh. Must have missed that part. Oh, it was right in the beginning. Uh, yeah, no, I, did, I don't think I read that part. Oh, I took a picture of it, so Great. it'll be it'll on the website. By memory. the way, um, check out these pictures really quick, because apparently I may or may not have been supposed to be taking some of these pictures. Right. So I might get a like a cease and desist thing. It was in the two-minute <clears> video. <throat> It was kind of worded awkwardly in the video. Right. He said, take all the pictures you want. He sure did. And then later on, he said, don't take pictures, don't take close-ups of like everything in the display. Yeah. So like from afar, he wanted you to take pictures? I don't know. But see, uh, but then it shows everything in the display. True. So I just went up and took pictures of things that I found really interesting. Yeah. It's not the whole display. A lot of people were taking pictures. So yeah. So I don't know. So they might stay up forever or they might send me a letter saying, hey, take these down. So definitely go to the website soon and check them out just in case. Mm -hmm. They also had a admittedly fake Fiji mermaid. They actually had two. Do you know what the Fiji mermaids are? You definitely saw them. Was it that like little guy? Uh, Well, they are little. There was one. There was a big one and there was a small one. Okay. Um, And the big one was a prop that they used in a show uh, that they made about Barnum, like a TV movie, oh. I think on A&E. And then the small one, I think, was just a regular old fake PG mermaid. But basically, those are typically made by taking the real body of a fish and sewing on the real body of a monkey. Okay. Yeah. That's what I saw. 
And it's called the Fiji Mermaid because the, the famous one is one that Barnum presented. Oh. Um, and that's what it was. But, of course, his his posters on the outside advertise this beautiful mermaid, you know, captured. And then you go in and you see... <laughs> yeah, that wasn't... The Fiji mermaid. But that would be what Barnum would call a little bit of humbug. Oh, okay. To, you know, hey, you still got to see the mermaid. Didn't look exactly as advertised, but... Yeah, because he, was, he wasn't pretty. No, they're nasty looking yeah. monster creatures. Mm-hmm. Again... You can see the pictures on com for now. <laughs> now, the next display was sort of like a, an unknown animal kind of thing, but it also led into um, werewolves and uh, dogmen. And there was a sign about the Terror of Lewiston, which I took a picture of. Um, but then... In some of the pictures, it looked to me like a fox. Um, they were saying it was like an unidentified animal. And then you saw one. I might be getting these two. These might be two separate things yeah. that I'm getting confused. But you saw one about Hubbardston, Mass. Yes. That was the picture I think you saw with the, the eyes that were Oh, glowing. that was the one that might be a fox? Yeah. <clears throat> that happened in 2012. Because then there was also... If you looked in that cabinet, there was a jar that had a paw in it. Okay. And it said that Lauren Coleman knew right away what it was. Oh. And then they used a fancy Greek name that had canine in it. Oh. Um, and then, you know, they said they like, oh, even so, we're going to send it for genetic testing or whatever. Mm-hmm. But he was allowed to keep the paw. So that might have been the Hoverston animal or it might have been something else, but... Uh, so either it was a dog or some type of dog. I don't know Latin names, so but a yeah. canine means dog. I know that. And <laughs> fox is a type of dog. So, Well, you said it looked like a fox. Just in the picture. I mean, yeah. I don't have a picture of that picture. Right. But if I can find one online, maybe I'll post that too. Right. Um, but we did try to look it up when we got back, and we haven't found much, well, any information on the Tower of Lewiston or this Hubbard unidentified animal except uh we found something about a boar and uh where was it lancaster lancaster yeah yeah lancaster i always want to say lancaster it's lancaster lancaster i should know my sister lived there for a while yeah and my brother's my brother-in-law's auto body shop is there but oh well (laughs) if you're in lancaster royal auto repair (laughs) <laughs> it's the place to go it's all about the shout outs yeah all right continuing with the dog men there was a really uh cool i guess folk art piece you would call it or outsider art piece mm-hmm. and it said it was done by a mental patient uh i forget if they said 50 or 60 years ago and it looked like a werewolf or something like that and it said perhaps you know, this person was seeing dog men because that's, you know, kind of what it looked like. I don't, I don't remember that. (laughs) Yeah. I took a picture. So you'll see that picture (laughs) at spooky com. Great. Um, yeah, the dog men thing is like, it's not like new in the sense that it's been probably reported over the past 20 to 30 years that I know of. Hmm. Um, Specifically as dogmen. Otherwise, you I think normally you just hear werewolf. But okay. and it's and it seems like a lot of um, sightings in Michigan. Really, it seems to be like a capital for dogmen dog sightings. Men? Yeah. Well, there's the Beast of Bray Road, which is like the most famous wolfman slash dogman encounter spot in the U.S. But then there's other spots. And probably not just in Michigan, but it seems like Michigan is a hotbed <laughs> of werewolf or dogman Who activity. Who knew? Well, listen, if they're if they're canine based, it could be that mm-hmm. they live or or hunt in packs. Mm-hmm. So it would make sense that if there's one dog man or wolf man in the area, there might be more than one. Okay. If you ever see the movie The Howling. No, I they have, have a they have a big old werewolf jamboree. 
like a coven of werewolves. But it's just interesting that it's Michigan. Like, what's what's so special about Michigan? Hey, it's got to be somewhere. True. <laughs> True. Not everything can happen in New York City or something like that. <laughs> or L.A. Oh, if you heard about a group of werewolves living in New York City, oh how sweet God. would that be? That would be a good story. It would be. All right, moving on. Maybe that's it. Maybe there's too much actual exciting stuff happening in New York City that they don't have time to make up stories about werewolves and right. dogmen. Dogmen. Not that everyone's making up stories, of course. <laughs> but some people probably are making up stories. <laughs> you guys know I'm a skeptic. Come on. Then there was like a a replica of, of the corpse from something called the living fossil, which I'm not very familiar with, but it did look pretty creepy and its eyeball was hanging out. Yeah, I remember that one. Yeah, picture of that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we finally went upstairs dun, dun, to dun, dun. the slightly larger hallway. <laughs> and up there they had a, a whole little shelf dedicated to the Dover Demon. Mostly with just like kind of statuettes uh, of the creature. And they had a rock from one of the stone walls that he was supposed to have crawled on. I see those walls because I go to the Dover Library still pretty often. Huh. Yeah. Cool. Through work. Mm -hmm. So I always wonder, I don't know exactly which stone wall, because there's actually a lot of stone walls on that road. So I wonder... Which one it was exactly. I know. But maybe I'll just take a rock from each one. (laughs) Then I can say, hey, I got plenty. (laughs) Uh, Also interesting up there, they had a Thunderbird prop. Yes, I did see that. Yep. Um, So apparently that was used in a couple different things, but Mm. um, in the Fox series Freaky Links. Okay. And then there was a picture of people, you know, um, Civil War, either actors in Civil War costumes or reenactors standing with this thing. And it was passed around the internet as like a legitimate photo of like, oh, these Civil War soldiers captured this thing back in the 1860s or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it was being passed around as like genuine. Probably still is to this day. People still probably pass it around. But now you know the truth. It's just a prop. And if you want to see it, it's on display <laughs> at the International <laughs> Cryptozoology Museum. You better go and see it. Yeah. Yeah. You can find a picture of it on com. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Then the whole second half of the upstairs hallway is basically dedicated to Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti, whatever you want to call them. Mm-hmm. The ape men. Mm-hmm. Creatures. Yes. Uh, one of the first things I noticed was the alleged Bigfoot hair samples. They had a lot of hair, like little <laughs> strands of hair. Uh, again, pictures of this on the website. <laughs> yes, Just they saying did. where they came from and, you know, mm-hmm. that they're out for testing or they have been tested and it has been identified and... Mm-hmm. You know, that kind of stuff. They also had fakes, too, which they admitted were fakes. So, uh, let's see. They had a mock-up of a baby Bigfoot, which they call a Seiyu. Oh. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing that correctly. Mm. Did you miss that? I didn't see that. I didn't see the baby Bigfoot. Oh, wait. No, I did see the baby Bigfoot. Yes. No, I did. <laughs> well, you can all see it at SpookyAshit.com. But oh, boy. <laughs> no, I did. It was it was near the stairs, right? As we were going down stairs. Um, it was in a case. I don't know. I have to look at the picture and see if that's what you remember seeing. Okay. Apparently, Great. if you had ever seen a, a Bigfoot in real life, you would not be a very reliable witness. Oh, you oh talk- maybe I saw it. 
I don't know. It looked like was a big Was it by foot. the stairs? <laughs> <laughs> I would be a really bad eyewitness. This is the problem with relying on eyewitness oh. testimony, which is a lot of what pseudoscience does. Mm-hmm. Well, all these people can't be lying. That's what they'll say. Well, lying is one thing, but people can make mistakes. And Right. Anyway, I usually save the debunking for the end of the episode. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um. And then one of the things the museum is most famous for is its life-size Bigfoot uh, statue, I guess. But I wouldn't, I don't know, it's not like a statue, like, I mean, it's more like a prop, I guess. Yeah. I don't it's think a life-size it Bigfoot mock-up. Yes. And uh, there's a big sign, like, have your picture taken with Bigfoot. <laughs> so I did. It's a really good picture of you. Well, and thanks. Bigfoot. <laughs> Brothers from another mother. He's a little bit taller. I'm not all that tall. I'm not all that short either, but I'm definitely not uh, Bigfoot height. Mm-hmm. I'm also up there, something that caught my eye. They have uh, hinges and some nails, and it says, from the Ruby Creek encounter. Hmm. So I said, oh, what's the Ruby Creek encounter? And there's yeah. not much there to tell you about it, but looking up... The incident online, it's an encounter from 1941 that a family had allegedly with a Bigfoot. Uh, in where was it, British Columbia? Yeah. Yeah. Um, where this creature came in and, and uh, damaged their barn door and then said it was, uh, it didn't harm anybody, but it would come back uh, subsequently. And seemingly late at night or early in the morning, uh, they said the family dogs would start going crazy around two o'clock in the morning. Mm. Um, but the beast never damaged the property again and never injured anyone in the family. But it has become a famous Bigfoot encounter story, which we'll probably get into more if we do an episode specifically about Bigfoot, which I'm sure we will. Cool. Then, along one of the walls, they had a bunch of sculptures of Bigfoot and Bigfoot skulls and stuff like that. But um, there was two that really caught my eye. <laughs> uh, there was what I call the uh, Koi Bigfoot. Because he really just, like, he's just has this pose where he's like, oh, me? Oh, you're taking a picture of me? Get a good shot, boys. <laughs> like looking back at you? Yeah. Shoulders up? Yeah. And he's right next to... Um, a Bigfoot that I assume is based on the Bigfoot that appears in the famous Patterson Bigfoot footage, which is the most famous, like, Bigfoot video. Oh, I think they were showing a little bit of yeah. that. Did you see? Okay. Yeah. Just look up Patterson Bigfoot footage if you don't know what I'm talking about, and I'm sure then you'll say, oh, I do know. Yeah, I've seen that a million times. Right. Um, but it's supposed to be based on that. They always talk about in that video about it being a woman because you can see the breasts. Really? Yeah. And I look at the video and I just see a black blur. Yeah. But on the video they had, they had like an enhanced video. And I, I could see where they were saying those were supposed to be breasts. Okay. Maybe, maybe not if they actually were. But I could at least see what they were talking about in that sense. Oh but my. the sculpture that they made yeah, has huge shapely bosom yeah it looks like a crumb painting basically if anyone's familiar <laughs> with crumb's work the uh cartoonist again pictures of both of these <laughs> standing next to each other on the website oh man yeah they also had a lot of samples of bigfoot tracks yes i do remember those yeah and um some of them were allegedly real Yep. And some they admitted were fake, but they always told you which ones were the fake ones. Right. Um, they even showed you how some people fake them. Yes. And some of the um, um, fake, like, footprint makers, which were like big blocks of wood. Mm-hmm. I saw that. Yeah. Uh, which is interesting. Yeah. Now the big thing is they, they look for the dermal ridges. Oh. Which are the like the little ridges and circles on your hand, well, on your hand or foot or where, like on your skin? Okay. Basically, like what you would see on a fingerprint. Mm-hmm. Right. And they say it's much less likely that it's 
faked if there's these dermal ridges, especially if the ridges have like marks in them, like wear marks or like scratches or something like that. Mm -hmm. But of course now, now that that's out there and people know that that's what people are looking for. Right. I'm sure you'll see more advanced. They'll be able to do that. Yeah. I can think of techniques to do that right now and I'm not even like someone who does that kind of stuff, but just through life casting, Mm -hmm. which I have a little bit of experience with. Yeah. You could like, do oh, I could make a mold of someone's foot and then enlarge it and then it would have perfect dermal ridges and all that yep. stuff. Yep. Anyway, well, that might be a fun Saturday project. <laughs> and then go in the woods. <laughs> Suddenly, there's a Bigfoot in Boston. Boston Common. He ran right through the common. There is a Yeti in Boston. Yeah? Yeah. He would come out during the snowstorms. What are you talking about? <laughs> Is this a real thing, or are you just saying bullshit? Yeah, no, no, no. It was a real thing. When I, I, it must have been the the winter that it snowed like every other weekend, and the yeti would you could see the yeti because the snow oh, was okay. like yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yes. I mean, there it was, was fake. Yes, but there was someone who dressed up as a yes, yes, yes. yes. Okay, okay, I'm with you now. Okay, great. <laughs> I thought you had a good story. That I know. But um, I was like, oh. Oh, no. but, I mean, that is an interesting story, but not, I was like, there's a real Yeti <laughs> setting, sighting in Boston? No. <laughs> All right. But yes, I do remember Sorry. that. Sorry. Um, so that's really the end of the museum, except they do have a gift shop, lots of books. Um, by Lauren couple, Coleman. Yeah, lots of books by Lauren Coleman. <laughs> um, again, not really knocking the guy. Don't, don't no, 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 no. I'm not yeah, either. He seems like a perfectly nice gentleman. Now, the museum only costs $10. And I'd say, you know, if you're in town and you want to check it out, it's definitely worth the $10. Yeah. Uh, the ride up there. But <laughs> it was a nice ride up there. We had a good time, but... Yeah. But still, I'm just saying in general... Right. If my friend from Boston said, hey, should I go up to the Cryptozoology Museum... I would say if you've got something else to do in Portland and you're going up there anyway, yeah, sure, go for it. Right. Would I suggest making a day trip just to go to the museum? Unfortunately, no, I would not. Ouch. <laughs> no. I agree with if, you. If you're in town, totally stop by. Sure. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 But yeah. again, if now we did some other things. We found some other things to do, which we'll talk about in a, in a bit. But right. um, so... You could make a day trip of going to do that plus mm-hmm. a couple other things. Yes. Would be a very nice day trip for anybody. Sure. Interested in this stuff. I agree. But as a standalone activity, no, I would not run up there just to go to the museum <laughs> and then head home. Right. <laughs> that would be an awful long drive. In fact, you said we need to find something else to do in Portland. Yeah. Because <laughs> I don't want the drive to have just been <laughs> for the... <sighs> Half hour, 40 minutes we spent in the museum. Right. Yeah. Half hour, I would say the most. Yeah. And there, like we could have taken more time and read every article and it would have, right. you know, taken a little bit more time. But I mean, I looked at as much as I was and I'm someone who's like into this stuff. Right. You yeah. Know? Um, and still, I was done about a half hour and I enjoyed myself. Mm-hmm. Like I didn't feel again for 10 bucks. I didn't feel ripped off. Yes, I agree. Um, but time wise. I was like, I don't know if the three-hour trip here justified coming to the museum. So that at that point, I did say, yes, we need to find something else to do, <laughs> which we did, which we'll get to in a second. But yes. um, I did buy, I can't like go to a gift shop like that and not buy something. No. no. There's a couple DVDs, but they were 20 bucks. And I was like, eh, they're probably not worth 20 bucks. I got, I paid that, I made that mistake at the Lizzie Borden Museum one time. Oh, I paid no. like 25 or $30 for a DVD. And it was like... Christina it was good. Ricci? It was good, but oh. no, it wasn't that one. Oh, okay. It was like a documentary, but oh. you know, it was like an hour long and you know. Not worth like it. Like this thing you see on A&E, you can probably find it online for free. Right. Um, so yeah, I said, no, I'll just get these patches. They had these really cool patches mm-hmm. and you could buy a whole set of like six or whatever for like 30 bucks, but I w- couldn't afford that quite. So I just picked out the coolest ones. Yeah. You got cool ones. And they all say um, Cryptozoology Tracking Society. And they each feature a different cryptid. So I had to get Sasquatch, of course. 
The only thing about this one is he kind of looks like he's showing off his ass. <laughs> well, he is. Yeah. Or maybe I should say she because, she, because what's this lump? Is that supposed to be a breast? Really? Like in the, see that? See how they, like, there's definitely a delineation there. Yeah, but maybe they're just man boobs. Who knows? Um, and then, of course, I had to get the Jersey Devil because he's an old friend of mine. Yep. And then I got one. This one was kind of an outlier because... I'm not super familiar with this case. And actually, it's not really a cryptid, but that's the Flatwoods monster hmm. who's actually um, at best an alien and possibly more like an alien vehicle than an actual alien itself. Uh, it's an interesting case, but uh, I don't know if I'd consider it a cryptid. And the reason I got it, though, was because it is definitely the coolest looking patch that they had there. Uh, again... He's a pretty cool looking monster. It's pretty cool. That yeah. is a, a cool one. Again, pictures on com of these patches. Now, as I said, I liked the museum. My complaint is not with the museum. Their right. pricing was fair and I had a good time. Mm-hmm. Everybody was friendly. Mm-hmm. It was a nice experience. Yes. However, did it justify the three hours in the car to get there? No, it did not. So I said, we need to find something else to do so that we feel like we didn't just come up here to walk around two hallways and look at narrow, two narrow hallways, Bigfoot junk, (laughs) nice junk. Don't, I mean, don't get me wrong, you know, but, uh, so we decided to, I, we literally got back in the car and just looked up things to do in Portland, like the highest rated things on TripAdvisor or, you know, a couple other sites. And uh, one of the ones we found was a place called Victoria Mansion. Yes. And all it is is uh, 18th century mansion house. Yeah, but you couldn't even get to the website. No, their website was fucked up. But (laughs) maybe that was just the mobile version. I don't know. But Ah, uh, it wanted you to have a password and all that stuff. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) So we had a Google search and we eventually found out what it was. And it's literally just a Victorian mansion. Um, But we said, well... Let's go and see what it is because it's supposed to be very fancy. And um, we were very pleasantly surprised, I would say. Uh, it was very nice. It, yeah. was, it was a very nice tour. Yeah, it's not spooky. No. So we won't get into like the spookiness of it. No. Because there wasn't really... On the outside, it was a little bit spooky. It kind of it kind of reminded me of Disney's Haunted Mansion, like walking yes. in. Yes, okay. Especially when we had to go through the back door because we had someone in our party that um, needed to use a walker, needed to use the like wheelchair lift. So we had to go in the back way. So we kind of ran around like the back trellis or whatever you might call it. Right. Um, and it did kind of remind me of the Haunted Mansion. I was <laughs> like, oh, and it's going to be kind of haunted. <laughs> but on the inside, it's not spooky at all. No, it's it's beautiful inside. Yeah, it's very uh, opulent, I guess would be the word. Mm. It's very nicely restored. And mm-hmm. the tour guide was very knowledgeable. Very nice experience. Charlie. Yeah. But in the gift shop, they had a book. Oh, yeah called the victorian book of the dead and i said well i might have to pick that up (laughs) so i thumbed through it pretty quick and of course it's just about funerals and you know um what the rituals were during victorian times and some stories and all that kind of stuff so i said yeah that's for me but when i bought it the woman who was behind the register was so excited she literally jumped out of her seat when she saw that I was buying she that book. She was, yeah. Because she she was the one that wanted to bring those books to the yeah. store. And everybody was saying, why would you? Yeah, I think basically the the company line at the Victoria Mansion is that this is a nice, like they want more of a Jane Austen yes. kind of feel. Right. Like this is a place for like. Yeah, they um, were selling tea sets yeah. and jewelry. Yeah. Right. <laughs> um, it's not like a spooky place. And again, no. when, when you go inside, it's not spooky at all. And it's, they don't talk about ghosts or anything like that. Right. Um, so I don't want you thinking because you heard it here that it's like that kind of tour. But the woman who works there was like, you know, I have one manager who doesn't mind me talking about spooky stuff. But I have another manager who totally does, doesn't want me to mentioning it <laughs> at all. Um, so we didn't really get into it. But she made it clear that she felt that it was haunted and that even more so uh, what used to be the stables or the carriage house 
um, which is now the gift shop. She said that she believes oh. that has more activity than the actual House? mansion. Really? Yeah. I miss that too. Yeah. So I gave her my card. Okay. So maybe someday we'll, we'll chat again. Yeah. Um, but definitely uh, when I learn some things from the book, we can do a whole episode on Victorian funeral practices. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. And then we went out to lunch. And we just had a lovely day in Maine, and it was my yeah. first time there. It was a very pleasant experience. It's a very, Portland is a very uh, pretty city. Very pretty, yeah. And they're all very nice. Yep, everyone, everyone was very was nice. nice to us. Yeah. So good on you, Maine. We enjoyed our visit. Yes. And uh, so like I said, I would recommend the Cryptozoology Museum if you live close to it. I would say about a half hour, 40 minutes would be a fair amount of time (laughs) to spend driving to it. Anything more than that, if you're going to Portland or you want to make a day trip where you want to do the Cryptozoology Museum and, you know, something else. Right. Then great. That's going to be a good day for you. Sure. That would be my recommendation. Mm Mm-hmm. So now... That you've been to the Cryptozoology Museum. Yes. What were your, what was your take on it? As someone who's not all about this stuff. Well, I definitely learned a lot today. But my, I, I've wanted to mention my favorite part was the learning about the jackalope. Uh-huh. It was very cool. And the chupacabra. Yeah. It was very cool. The Mexican goat sucker. The Mexican goat sucker. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, those were my two favorite things. <laughs> All right. Um, but overall, I thought it was it was really cool to learn about cryptids. Yep. Um, and now I feel very knowledgeable. There you go. Yeah. So even you, someone who's not really into the stuff, you had this a good time right. at the museum. I did. Yeah. So I'd say that's a pretty good review for the museum. Yeah. And uh, I'd be I'd be interested to see what it looks like when they're done with these renovations that they're doing. Yes, I think it's going to be good. It's going to be, you know, with the cafe, get a coffee. Yeah. Check out some Bigfoot stuff. Yeah. (laughs) They sell the castings too, which I thought was interesting. And I was saying, if I had like a curio cabinet, a curiosity cabinet, which I don't, my whole place is kind of, yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) But if I had room for it, I probably would have bought one. Right. I didn't. Yeah. Okay. You could put a lot of things in your curiosity cabinet. Yeah. All right, then. I think that about covers it. Again, don't forget to check out the website. Plenty of pictures. Everything that we talked about tonight, pretty much we've got pictures of for now before I get a letter telling me to take them down. You can see them on com. You can also friend us on Facebook, facebook.com slash spooky AS. And don't forget to find us on iTunes. You can search for spooky AS or you can search by my name. And uh, then you can subscribe, please, and like it and rate it and review it with five stars, preferably. So thanks again, Cryptozoology Museum and the state of Maine and Becky's Diner for a wonderful lunch and awesome brownies. Oh, yeah. And thank you for Tima. Oh, you're welcome. And until next time, don't be afraid. <laughs>